have an awesome free plugin to check out today. This might be the best free EQ that's available right now. And we're talking about the Dynamic EQ from ZL Audio. This is a free open source plugin available to everyone with no strings attached. You just download it. You don't have to get on a mailing list or anything. And it's still under development, but it's working really, really good right now. So the fact that this is free is pretty amazing. And this is not a sponsored video. I'm just excited to share awesome free plugins as always. So we're going to go over every aspect of this plugin. So by the end of this, you should know totally how this thing works and what it can do. All right, let's dive right in and start turning some knobs. We're going to start with taking a look at the CQ with the instance that's on the master bus. Now, you can have up to 16 bands with this EQ, and it is a fully dynamic EQ. To create a band, you just simply click on it, and it works as you would expect. It's got a really nice user interface that defaults to a peak band here. We'll get to the top panel here in a second, but down on the bottom, you'll see where it says peak. If I click on that, I can turn this to a low shelf. It does high shelf, it does a low pass, a high pass, and it does a band pass, and it does a notch filter, which is really cool. We're going to take a look at it in a second. And when you have the node highlighted, you can scroll with the mouse wheel to change the Q value, or you can change it down here. And you can drag it around to change the frequency, up and down to change the gain, and those controls are also right here. This little button right here solos it out for you. You have the same solo function here, and you have a bypass for it right here. And you can also click right here and change the filter type. It also does a tilt. So this could be really useful for a quick mastering job. Here you'll see where the slope controls are. And it goes all the way to 96. And at Peak Filter, this is really cool because you can get this style of cut or boost. So that's at 48. We change it to 72. And if you go back down to 12, it's more of a gentle bell. So that's just a neat EQ curve to have access to. That's what the 96 slope looks like on a low shelf. And there's 36, and all the way down to a 6 dB very gentle slope. And we could disable a band right here by clicking on it. And like I said, you can have up to 16 bands. So this is a really effective notch filter, and the fact that you have 16 bands mean you can do several notches and still be able to do all of your regular EQ work and dynamic work with just one instance of this plugin. Now, any or all of these bands can become dynamic, and this little S-shaped curve down here is what activates the dynamics for the band. And you have independent threshold, attack, release, and knee control all right here. Now, this little diamond that comes under the band is effectively the range for the threshold. So if I take the range way down and then start to adjust the threshold, now you can bury the threshold into the range as a maximum. And we could also back off on the threshold. So it's just doing a little bit of gain reduction, but that range still acts as a maximum. So that's very cool to not just have a threshold, but also have a range. And now this little A right here, this is an automatic attack. So you can turn that on if you like and see how it is. And we could speed up the release really fast and also goes really, really slow. So there's a lot of independent control here. You know, I could take this up to more of the uh, high spiky transient information and go with a really fast attack, back way off on the threshold, and just get a little bit of peak gain reduction right there, and speed up the release, and let this recover really fast. Now, 
Now, up here on the top, the general controls offer a zero latency mode, which, of course, might add a little bit of struggle to your CPU, but it does offer that. And there's a dynamic link mode, collision for frequency masking. If you turn the collision detection on, you can see the red start to show up here in the background. This will give you an indicator of certain frequencies that might be clashing where there might be masking occurring. And there's the adjustable strength and scale. So the collision detector is really nice. That can really help with frequency masking. Now in the output section, the SGC is a static gain control that we can turn on or off. And the AGC is an automatic gain control that we can turn on or off. And that can be really helpful as well because if you start doing a whole bunch of boosts and cuts, this can help you level match with your ears so you're not constantly turning faders up and down. So yeah, static and automatic gain control right here, as well as a general output. Now the dynamic section is really helpful. Here is a look ahead option and you can just drag it forward. And so right now this is responding to the green one that I have in dynamics right here. That's adding look ahead to that dynamic node. And here's your RMS. Right now it's at zero, so we are in peak detection, but this also offers RMS. So very helpful. So instead of catching these dynamic peaks right here, I can turn this into a really gentle, smooth gain reduction just to mellow that out without squashing too many of the transients. So yeah, peak and RMS detection right there. There's also a high quality mode. And when you turn this on, this will help reduce artifacts and aliasing. And that's really cool to have. Now the analyzer section right here, we see pre and post. Pre basically means input and post will let you look at the output spectrum. And then side is for sidechain and we'll get to that in a second. And then we can speed up and slow down the analyzer here. Right now it's on medium. If I turn it to slow, we'll get that gentle trend over time. It goes down to very slow and it will also freeze for us, which is really cool. So that is moving at basically a crawl. That's very helpful to have all those options. And there's very fast if you want to see your transient information. So super helpful. And the last one up here in the top section is UI, which means the user interface. And this is where you can change the colors of the graph and where it says side color, that's your side chain color source. And if I want to engage the dynamics on each node, I click down on this little S and now we've engaged the dynamics and you can see the dynamic menu turn on down here. This is the little range, like I said. If I take the range up, this plugin will also do expansion. So now this is not doing gain reduction, it's doing dynamic expansion. And here where it says stereo, this is where you can assign left, right, mid, or side for every single band. So we could just boost the mids here on the lows, on the master here, because we're on the master bus. And we could also change this to sides and just take out side information on our whole mix. So this is fully mid-side capable on every node. It's very, very cool. And you can have, you know, some nodes on stereo and this node we could just set to mid and then the high shelf we could just set to side for stereo expansion. So yeah, very, very cool. Lots of awesome stuff we can do. Now, all I've done with this mix is drag in these stems, do some gain staging, level setting, and a little bit of panning. So there's no process in any of these. And we have one instance of this ZL equalizer on every one of these tracks. Let's start with the Dobro. Since Dobros are so dynamic, let's do a little bit of dynamic EQ work just to compress the Dobro here. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the dynamics on this band. It's defaulting to a little expansion. I'm gonna bring that down. I'm gonna make this a really wide reduction right here. And that's pretty nice. That's nice, smooth dynamics there for the low end. 
Now I double click up here and I'm gonna bring on a high band. Now we all know how transient and spiky and pokey a dobro can be. Turn on the dynamics. Now I'm gonna solo this band. And now we can listen around for those spiky dynamics on the dobro. Right up in here. It's where it can get a little harsh. This is the harsh stuff. So we'll take it out of solo mode. Now I'm gonna bring the range down. I'm gonna scroll out to make our cue a little wider. And let's bring that threshold down. Yeah, that little bit of gain reduction right there is gonna make the dobro a lot smoother. So very cool. Now let's head over to the acoustic guitar. We're gonna side chain this acoustic to the dobro. And we're gonna bring on a dynamic band here. We'll turn on the dynamics. All right, and you can see right now that the acoustic is just dynamically compressing the high end here, but we want it to side chain to the dobro. So I've activated the side chain to the dobro in the DAW, but to activate this node to the side chain, that's what this little S is down here. So now with that activated, you can see that the dynamics on the acoustic are just responding to the dobro. So very cool. So this is how we'll reduce frequency masking between the acoustic and the dobro. And I'm gonna add another one of these down here towards the low end. There we go, just a little bit of frequency masking reduction side chain to the dobro. Let's bypass this one. And you can hear a little bit of masking between the acoustic and dobro there. Let's turn this back on. Yeah, very cool. And when we want to see our side chain in the analyzer, I should have done this first to go up here to analyzer and go to side and just turn it on. And now you can see the dobro there in green along with the acoustic. And that will help you get a visual on the frequency masking. So yeah, in order to turn the side chain on for a node, it's this S control down here. And in order to see it, you just drop down under analyzer and turn it on. And there you go. This is an awesome EQ for side chaining. Now let's head over to the overheads. Yeah, so we're just taking some side information out of the low end of the overheads. That'll keep our kick and snare pretty mono there in the low end. And now let's do some side chain expansion, which means we use that range tool and drag it above the zero mark in the graph to create upward dynamic expansion. Now this little control that shows up down here, this is what the EQ node is listening to. So now I'm gonna drag this node down to the fundamental of the snare, which you can see in the graph is right down here. That's the snare hitting right there. And this is a really neat little trick. So we're getting the expansion where the brightness of the transient of the snare is around four or five K, but it's not listening there. It's listening to the fundamental of the snare, which is triggering the expansion up in the high mids where we want it. And you can see the orange lines here on each side. You can narrow this as well or expand it. So I'm gonna narrow this down really far so it's just listening to the snare. So yeah, this is an awesome overhead trick. All right, let's see what we can do to the snare drum here. Let's give this snare fundamental a nice boost and compress it. Solo out here and see what we don't need in here. I want that first harmonic, but there's a little boxiness right there. Let's turn on the dynamics, drag our range down. Nice. Show you what I just did. Let's bypass this band. Back on. Yeah, that's what we want. Let's turn on another band and let's get some high transient action coming through here.
Here we go. That adds some nice air to our snare. That's a 14K. I like that. We can narrow that a bit. And let's do some high mid here. We'll go to another peak filter, narrow the band, and let's get that transient here. Let's solo this band. Yeah, right about there. That's the transient we like. But let's make sure we compress it and keep it under control. Go pretty fast attack, pretty fast release. Very cool. And that's a nice, quick, easy work on the snare there. Let's take a look at a few more features here that we haven't done with this plugin yet. Let's do a simple high shelf dynamic. I'm gonna speed up the attack and just try to keep those peaks under control. I'm actually gonna do a little bit of look ahead now. There we go. Just a little bit of targeted dynamic EQ work on the mandolin to smooth it out. Bypass. Back on. Probably a few notch filters we could deploy right in here too to clean up a few harsh spots. Right about there. Narrow that up a bit. All right, there's our mandolin. Now this is on the bass guitar. Let's go ahead and side chain it pre-fader to the kick. And that kick fundamental is around 68 hertz here. It's right about there. Let's turn the side chain on and the dynamics. This is a great way to do a side chain between a kick and a bass guitar is instead of using a compressor is to use a dynamic EQ. And then we can narrow this in and just do a little reduction, just about the width of the frequency response on the fundamental of the kick. I'm gonna drag this way down and I'm gonna speed that release up so it recovers real fast. Got to narrow that cue down. Very cool. And there's our bass side chain to our kick drum to keep the low end clean. Let's bypass. Back on. Yeah, very cool. What an awesome equalizer. It's absolutely amazing that this is free. This is a super powerful EQ. I will leave the link in the description of this video here that you can click straight over and go ahead and download this equalizer. So I hope you like that. If you're looking for a good free dynamic equalizer, this is about as good as it gets. So, all right, let me know what you think in the comments and thanks for checking that out. I catch you all on the next one. Happy mixing.